Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, they got a little quick project we're going to be doing, uh, helping out a friend of mine, Greg Lane, down in Coolidge, Georgia. Uh, you may remember a little while back we went down there and played around and did, shot a little video uh, firing and driving his uh, Frick steam traction engine. And uh, Greg reached out to me about a week or so ago, wanted to see if I could do a little quick job for him on that Frick steam traction engine. So here's the story. He uh, was having his uh, state boiler inspection done, which uh, is something that he needed to do to be able to take that engine around uh, to uh, other places and shows and so forth. And uh, when they came out to do the inspection, uh, everything looked great, but they were gonna do a hydro test. A hydro test is basically when you fill the boiler completely up with water, take it up to pressure above what it's rated for and look for any leaks. And if, as long as you don't have any leaks in there, that should tell you that your pressure vessel is safe to operate. Uh, along with the other inspections. It was kind of the last part of that. Well, when they went to pressurize his boiler, he was getting a steam leak, not on his boiler, but on a valve. Uh, this valve right here, this is the main shutoff valve uh, on that uh, whole engine where they could shut the, the, the steam off going to the engine. He had it locked down, but it was just leaking just enough water past this valve that uh, it wouldn't hold pressure and they were unable to do the hydro test. He pulled the valve apart and realized that there's some issues with this valve seat and uh, he asked me if I could uh, see if I could fix it for him or either make him a new seat one. I said, yeah, before I try to make a new one though, I wanna to try to repair this one and I think I can. So let me kind of zoom you in, show you what's going on here and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna fix this and hopefully we're gonna be able to repair this one and not have to make a new one from scratch. Uh, but plan B, uh, we'll, we'll just machine a new one out. So let's show you what we gotta do. So basically this is your valve uh, handle. Uh, this is the part that you open and close. There's a screw inside of this and it clamps uh, this piece down the bottom, which is the actual valve seat. This is made where it kind of spins freely uh, on the valve uh, so that it's not turning as you turn the handle, it will just move straight down. And here's the problem. See this little nick here on the side? There's actually two of those, one on this side and one over here. I'll clean this side up a little bit. Uh, but looks to me like somehow or another this valve may have come loose from this and got down in that valve seat uh, a little bit crooked and they tightened it down and damaged that surface. And the, you can kind of see this ring. It basically makes contact with the valve seat from about there on out to here and right here it's just not enough material there to make good contact to seal that up. So uh, you know, first thing I looked at, I, I was assuming this was going to be a, a bronze or brass uh, valve seat. We got to looking at it and no, it was shiny metal. It was more of a white metal. Took a magnet, stuck to it. Magnet wouldn't stick, not steel. Um, what this material I'm almost 100% positive is, is a, a material called manel, uh, which is a nickel based uh, material. It's similar to Inconil. If you're familiar with Inconil, it's a little bit different formulation, but Manel was commonly used in valves uh, because it's uh, corros corrosion resistant and uh, it was very often used in steam valves, even going back a long time ago. Pretty sure that's what this material is. Um, I've never really worked with Manel. I have done a little bit with Inconil in the past, very little, uh, but uh, I've, I've been doing a little bit of research and trying to come up with what, a, what to do. I would really rather use this original disc here. This is cast uh, Manel, it looks like, and it was machined out. While I could totally make a brand new and I would have to make it out of bronze um, and it, it would be a machine part, it wouldn't be a cast part. And, you know, honestly, this valve is likely original to that steam engine and Greg would like to keep it as original as possible. So we're gonna try a repair first and foremost. Now, my plan is to actually go over there and build these, these areas up and then take this over to the lathe and basically reface that, that um, seat. Uh, and get a couple of the little small nicks and stuff we have in there out. These two on the, each side are really the, the, the biggest culprits. And uh, to do this, I did a little bit of research. Uh, Manel can be uh, TIG welded. 
and that's what we're going to try to do. I actually purchased some uh, Manel TIG welding rods. Um, I had to order about a pound of them, uh, and I've found another uh, Manel valve out at the museum in the scrap pile, and I've been doing a little bit of practicing over there on my TIG welder, and I think I'm ready to, to try to build these up. All I want to do is just put a little bit of material in there that I can then come back and machine off. And like I said, we'll just cut a new face on there, and uh, hopefully all will be good. So that's the game plan. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is go out there and try to get this cleaned up as good as I can before we TIG weld and uh, bring you guys along for the ride. Let's do it. Fortunately, this uh, just unscrews, so um, I can just work with that little piece right there. All right, I've just got this kind of over here in a clamp. Uh, I got one side up. And we're just going to come in here and hopefully just build this area up a little bit. Now, this material I mentioned is a nickel copper alloy. Uh, and this is my brazing, or not brazing, but TIG sticks that I ordered. This is uh, supposedly the same, similar material. It may not be the exact same alloy. The nice thing about this particular rod is, is that you can actually braze with it. You can use this like on cast iron or something like that to weld or braze, however we want to call it, this similar materials. So even if this is not a perfect match in, in alloys, it still should work fine um, on this right here, according to my research that I did. So uh, we're just going to come in here. We'll put some heat into this. Now, tigging this uh, manel or inconel, you don't get a nice, real visible puddle. Uh, it's, it's a real sluggish puddle. Uh, like I said, I played around a little bit on, on a scrap piece that I got out of another valve that's very similar, and I think I got a feel for it. Like I said, we're just going to try to build it up and then we'll machine it back down. All right, let's get in here and uh, do it. All right, I think I'm ready to roll. Get an arc going, and I'm going to start by just kind of putting a little bit of heat into this. I'm not really focusing it on there quite yet. I want to just kind of build up a little bit of heat in that area before we start. Increase my heat. Should give me plenty of material to remove. I'm going to roll this around to the other side. You kind of see that copper color coming out with a little bit of heat in there, and that is hot as a firecracker. All right, here we go, side two. Probably gob that on a little bit more than necessary, but uh, I want to make sure I got plenty of material there. I could see that uh, material kind of melting up underneath it. I'm just gonna let this cool off. And in fact, I'm probably gonna call it a day. It's getting about five o'clock out here in the shop, and uh, we'll come in and machine this off tomorrow after it cools down. All right, guys. So I let that cool down overnight. And I just went over to the belt center and kind of knocked off some of the excess. Um, but it looks like it's, it bonded good. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, next step is I need to set this up on the lathe. 
to just reface this. And to do that, I'm gonna build a little arbor that has the same thread. And I came in here and measured these threads. This looks like a, a tapered thread. I'm not gonna do a tapered thread uh, just because it's more trouble than it's worth. I just need to be able to screw it up onto a shoulder and, and go with it. But um, measures about 950 thousandths in diameter, seems to be kind of the average. And it uh, looks like it's 20 threads per inch. So we're just gonna go over to the lathe and real quickly make an arbor that we can screw this thing up on. And then we can turn, put this on the lathe and, and turn it and get that face re, re, uh, re, recut on there. Let's go make the arbor and we can finish this thing up real quick. All right, we put a piece of metal in here to make this arbor out of. I've already faced off this side here and gone in 3 eighths of an inch deep and we're getting ready to turn that down. Uh, I need to put that diameter in. What was that? 1.370. Uh, and I need to turn that down to 950. So here we go. that shoulder on the back side. All right, we are ready to uh, cut threads. I'm not sure if I caught that on video making this, but basically we just took a piece of metal, put it in here. I turned that down 950 thousandths. I uh, got a shoulder there, it's turned 3 8 inch deep and I'm getting ready to thread this now. This will just be what we thread that arbor up onto or that piece up onto to turn. Uh, we're going to be threading this at 20 threads per inch. Uh, I'm going to let it actually make a circle all the way around rather than pulling out. I want to, in fact, I may even come back in afterwards and kind of cut a notch in there because I want that piece to go right up to that shoulder and tighten up. So uh, got a number coming around here. Let's engage. And we'll bring that right up to that shoulder right there and stop. I'll pull out and we'll get ready for the next pass. Wait for the next number to come around. Here we go. test fit here with my part. And that's screwing up on there nice. And that's going to go up to the shoulder. Look at there. Perfect. All right. We can turn that face on that now. Next thing we need to do is figure out what angle this is. And I'm just using a little bevel project protractor here. I've got it on there and that's actually 80 degrees in included angle there. And uh, to do half of that, uh, which I need to set my compound to, I need to set it to 40 degrees uh, to cut that, which would be half of 80. Um, so that's what we'll set our compound to and get this project knocked out. All right, quick look at my setup. I've got my compound set to 40 degrees and uh, I'll come up here with the cutter and just kind of ran across that surface without it turning. And it looks like it's a perfect match. So I think we're good. And we can just uh, trim that face up just like that right there. We'll just uh, 
feed in with this one and feed across uh, with this one. So that's, uh, and all I want to do is just true it up, get it where that face is running, get basically all the imperfections out up. So we got a nice clean face across there. All right, here we go. I'm just kind of feeling in here. I see a little bit of a mark on there. I'm just going to run that across. Starting to get into that weld down here at the bottom. All right, I'm going to feed in about another five thou. Actually, that's about three thou. Not quite cleaned up yet. A little bit more. Very light passes. I don't want to take any more off of this uh, valve face than I have to. I can tell we're still not quite cleaned up yet. I got an area there that's not hitting. But uh, let's continue on. Take about another five thou. We're getting close. Still not quite cleaning up right in here. And take another five thou. just about there. I got one little bit of a mark right in there. We're going to try to get out. So five more thou. I'm just sneaking up on this. I could have come in here and just made a heavy cut, but I really don't want to take any more than I just absolutely have to here. Take your time. I think we got it there. Yeah, that looks really good and now what I want to do is just uh, touch this we'll just true this up on the end and that just needs to be at, at straight across so uh, coming here let's start cutting a little bit I'm going to leave good enough alone. All right. Before I put this valve back on, I was looking at these threads a while ago, and they are kind of rolled over and deformed in a couple places. So I'm just going to real lightly touch this with a thread file. Now, if you've never seen one of these, these have different thread pitches in them. It's a file. And I'm going to pick my 20 thread per inch right here. You got basically a file. You can come in here and go right on top of those uh, existing threads and all I'm doing is I'm just kind of knocking any burrs off any places where it may be rolled over or something like that I'm really not trying to file much off the top I'm really trying to just clean redefine those uh, threads in there and that should help a bunch right there And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this over in the vise and we'll tighten that up. So we got this little tab on the bottom, which is perfect for putting this up in the vise like such. I'll tighten that up. And now we can come in here with a wrench and just tighten this back up. And with that, I think we are finished up. New valve seat, valves on there. I think we're good to go. So I'll call Greg up and let him know this thing's ready to pick up. 
just another look here. All looks good. You can see that was one of the areas that I built up right there. There's a little bit of an area here. That little nick there was in there. You can see a little bit of a color difference uh, between the two materials. So it's probably not a perfect match, but close enough. You kind of see that little bit of a copper tint to it. Again, this Manel material is a nickel copper alloy. And uh, so it has kind of a little bit of bronze look to it or copper look to it, but it's, it's primarily nickel. But uh, I think that's gonna work fine for them. We'll uh, let Greg come pick that up and hopefully that'll get him back up and going and everything will be good. Well, there we go. One more project knocked out. Uh, like I said, I get Greg to come pick this up and hopefully he can get this back on his steam engine and get the state back out there to do another uh, test on it to make sure everything checks out do that hydro test and he should have a certified boiler ready to go. Uh, that boiler on his engine is actually a fairly newly built boiler by Jonas Stutzman, so there shouldn't be any problems with it, but state requires an inspection, uh, particularly since it hasn't been registered here in the state before. Uh, but I don't anticipate him having any troubles at all once he can get this valve closed off and build up enough pressure on there to properly do the hydro test. And with that, guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit the bell icon up there to get notifications. And uh, with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.